Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 5 of Photoshop Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to blend images again. Now, you might remember that in episode 4, I showed you how to blend a couple images that technique is real common in wedding photography and we use the image of the bride and groom and we blended it with the images of the wedding bands shortly after that i did a lightroom quick tips video episode 45 and i showed how you could kind of do the same thing but in a different way we put the the bride and groom on top of the wedding bands like this using the print module in lightroom well yeah, I received a few emails and folks wanted to know if you could do this in Photoshop but blend the uh, image of the bride and groom better with the rings because you are limited in Lightroom. You really can't blend it that well. So I said, sure, and I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. So we're going to take the same images that we used last time. We have the bride and groom and we have the rings. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to crop the image of the bride and groom into a vertical similar to what we did in that Lightroom video. So I'm just going to pull the sides in and I'm going to pull the top down a little and that's good right like that. So we're just going to click this checkbox. Well maybe I'll move them over more towards there. There we go. Then we'll click the checkbox and that's done. Now I want to move this image on top of the other image. So I'm going to get the move tool. I'm going to hit the V key on the keyboard for the move tool. We're just going to click down on the image, drag it up to the tab and drop it on the rings. So there it is on top of the rings. Now we have the two images. We have the background image of the rings. We have the bride and groom on top and we want to kind of fade the bride and groom out towards the rings. So they're kind of blended together. Now to do that, we are again going to use the gradient tool. The gradient tool is right here uh, in your toolbar. Once you get the gradient tool, go up here and make sure that you're using the third gradient over from the left. This is black comma white. You want to make sure you're using that tool. What we want to do is get a layer mask on this layer. So go down here in the lower right and click on the little layer mask icon and we'll get a white layer mask. Now what we want to do is we want to draw the gradient out uh, like from the edge of the like groom here towards the edge of the image. Now if you just draw it out as your probably default, you won't have reverse clicked. If you just draw it out like that, you'll see that you're going the wrong way. We're getting rid of our bride and groom. We don't want to do that. So you click this little reverse tick right there. So make sure your click there. I also have dither and transparency ticked. All right. Now we could experiment a little. Every time you draw it and redraw it, you're going to overwrite what you did before. Meaning, let's say I just want to try it from here to there. Okay. Well, that didn't do such a great job. So I could just do it again, maybe from here to there. And you could see how if I just keep redrawing it, it just does it differently every time. Do you see what I mean? All right, so what we're going to do for this one, I think, is I want to kind of fade the groom a little bit. So I'm going to come on top of him a little bit and go to about there. So you can see how we faded the groom just a little bit. Now, with that said, we want to do the other three sides. Remember, when you do when you write it once and then write it a second time, the second time is going to overwrite the first time. So if I just come up here and do the top, it's going to overwrite what I did over here. So we don't want that. So let's go back here and let's go to about there. Okay, so we faded that. So now what we have to do is we have to apply the mask to the image. And there's a couple different ways you could do that. One way is you could click on layer, you go down to layer mask, and then you'll go down to apply. The other way is you could just double click on the mask itself and you'll get this properties dialog for the mask and then this little icon at the bottom is the apply uh, mask uh, tool so you just click on that and you can see our layer mask is gone but we have the mask applied to the image now so what we'll do now is we'll get another layer mask and then we'll do go up this way all right and if you're happy with that fine if not you just keep redrawing it until you're happy with it and then what we'll do is we'll double click on the mask we'll apply that mask 
then we'll get a new layer mask and then we'll go the other way this way so we're fading that way and then we'll apply that mask then we'll get our last layer mask and we'll do the bottom like that okay so that looks pretty good now this last mask you don't have to apply if you don't want to that is optional so we have the bride and groom on top of the rings and it's pretty much kind of blended nicely with the rings so now in the Lightroom video I put some text up here so if you want to do that we'll just click on the text tool and I want to get I'll get the same um, font I used in that uh, video which I think was Lucinda like handwriting or something like that uh, bear with me handwriting italic right there we'll do that and 72 pixels is probably going to be too big so let's try 48 and we'll put it right over here so here we're going to put the date they got married uh, you don't like the font of course you could always use a different font so we're going to move that when you type in text you'll get a new text layer and if you go right on top you could come up here and you could like highlight it and then change the font or change the size so if I wanted a different size you'll see how it got smaller or larger then once you're happy with it if you just click again like that you could see what it looks like a little better then if you go below it you kind of turn into a move tool and you can move it around all right, so let's just leave it there for the sake of argument. And then when you're done, you click this little checkbox. Now, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanted to, if you remember in that Lightroom video, we kind of gave the rings a whitewash. So if you want to do that, you click on the layer with the rings. In this case, it's the background layer. And you want to get a curves adjustment layer. So you go right up here to curves adjustment layer. If your workspace doesn't look like this, I am in the photography workspace. So you might be in a different workspace and it will look totally different. So I'm in the photography workspace. So we're going to get that curves adjustment layer. And similar to what we did in the Lightroom video, we're just going to push this up like that. Now that's this is, again, optional. It just might help everything blend a little better or look a little more blended. I don't know. So I'll give that a try. If you like that, fine. If you don't like that, you can just click it off. I, I kind of like it either way, I guess. So you want to readjust it. You could double click on that and maybe bring it down. Of course, it would help if I had the eyeball on. There we go. Yeah, so I don't think that looks too bad at all. So that is how you do this technique that I did a few days ago in Lightroom, but do it in Photoshop. And again, in Photoshop is a more powerful program and you could do fade the image in I don't want to I say blend and that's really not correct because blending modes are a totally different thing in Lightroom or I'm sorry in Photoshop and it really has nothing to do with what we did so I'll say I kind of with with Photoshop you could kind of fade the image in to the other image a little more effectively than you can in Lightroom all right so that's it for episode five I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos thank you very much I truly do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon.